Hi everyone, welcome back to another installment of how to build your own DIY lithium cell capacity checker. And last week there wasn't a video released about this series, but of course this week there is. Now last week I did this instead, I did this in its place, and it's how to wire up an OLED screen. And the reason why I did this in place of the lithium cell capacity checker video is because this week's uh, video relies on last week's video on how to wire up the OLED screen. So, if you haven't already watched that video, um, please do that now. Um, and then return back to this video soon. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to put this in place and we're going to fiddle with the code from the library in order to um, get started with what we need for the lithium cell capacity checker. So, um, let's get started. So I'll zoom in to start with and we'll push the TFT, uh, not the TFT, the OLED in here. This is going to be a pain actually um, because when I come to wire uh, to plug the USB in we're going to have an issue. Uh, so let's, yeah I'll put it here. Bit of a weird place but anyway. Right so uh, ground to ground Round to ground, and then we've got uh, VCC to 3.3 volts, 3.3 to VCC, then we've got D0 to D13, D0 to D13, which is here, then we've got D1 to D11, D1 to the 11 which is down here then we've got uh, reset which I don't actually know if it is reset but reset to D8 uh, reset to D8 which is there then we've got DC which is data command to D9 data command to D8 9, if that's going to go in, and then finally we've got chip select, and I've set that to D10. So chip select D10, right in the middle of these two here. There we go. So that's the wire up done. And so now we'll need to go over to the PC and we'll need to do some code. Now, like I said, um, I actually set this up in the previous video, uh, which would be called something like how to wire up an OLED with Arduino, something like that. So, yeah, this is just going to be based on that same code. So, what I'm going to do now is go to the PC, bring that code over, as well as the code from the previous videos for this lithium cell capacity checker, and then merge them both together. Uh, and I'll talk you through that now. Right. Here's the code from the... Um the OLED video that I did last week and here's the code for the uh, cell capacity checker which I did two weeks ago maybe uh, this is the latest version so now we're going to make the um, or we're going to change the code for um, this video and we're going to basically mix both of these together so we're going to need these include lines so copy the include lines and they need to go right at the top of the sketch and then we also need to copy these lines here, the define lines. And they can go, um, let's say before these define pins here. It might complain about this line, it might say you have to put it after the define pins. So actually, I'm not 100%, but just to keep it simple, let's move that to there. Now num flakes and all this, I don't think we're going to need all that because... Uh, well, I won't go into it, but I don't think we will. So in setup, we need this line. Um, so let's let's put it here. Then display display. I'm not exactly sure if we need that. Um, so I'm going to leave that out. Um, then we'll go down here, and we're looking for text. Ah, it appears to be here, so, right, 
let's put it here so let's copy that and it can go uh, in setup we'll delete the ready line and let's put it here and control T I'll just save this as one second cell capacity checker 6 okay so we've copied that over there and now what else do we need um, we don't really need the clear display uh, it's certainly not at the moment anyway let's see if there's anything else we need here invert display we don't really need that and in the loop um, right we might have to go back to this loop in a few seconds So, display set text size and white, and we've got a set cursor, which will be the horizontal and the vertical position, I would imagine. So let's change this, and what actually do we want? We want to know the current voltage to start with. So, um, voltage, uh, set text color, black, white, I'm not, I assume foreground and background maybe. So anyway, we want voltage. Um, let's delete delete these lines here. Let's delete those lines. Delete that line too. And we may need to play about here. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to look yet. We want the voltage, the I suppose current amperage. Um, time. Uh, we need at least those uh, those variables uh, to be shown. I suppose it would be handy if we had the average as well. Um, so let's do one one more average average amp size. Average. Oh, what's going on here? Average amps. Control C. Control S. Now, um, we're going to need to fiddle with this set cursor. Okay, so this one here is the vertical position, and that one's the horizontal position. I've just found out. So I'm going to change this to 8, 16, and 24. And well, that should be fine. And I also need something to clear the display, which it will be here somewhere. Uh, yeah, clear display. And I'll put that uh, at the top here. We'll change that to one second. That's because the the library by default will show the Adafruit uh, logo, which is fine for this project. I'm not too bothered, but of course we need it to be clear before we write these values on. So um, I'll upload this and let's see what it's looking like. Okay, at the moment it's not looking too impressive, however, we have got the uh, core features, if you like. We've got the voltage, the amperage, the time, and average amps. So what we need to do is we need to print the current voltage into voltage, the current amperage, which is flowing through the load, into amperage, the time in, let's say, seconds, into time, and the average amps, that will be um, the samples divided by the amount of seconds, uh, basically the mean amperage. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go back over to the code. So what we have to do next is we have to print the uh, values of the variables to the screen. This gets a little bit complicated because we actually have to uh, consider the refreshing of the variables because of course the variables need to update and need to be accurate on the screen. And there are different ways of getting around this. Um, one of them is to clear the whole screen and then rewrite all of the stuff. But if we do that, we'll have to rewrite the titles, and I don't really want to do that. And it's probably a little a considerable amount of work for the Nano to do. Another way is that you can do something a bit more clever, and remember the old value, and write over the old value with the inverse colour. So, for example, if I write an Anthony on a screen, on a black background with white text, then if I was to write Anthony in exactly the same place with black text on a black background then you could say that that, uh, that word isn't there anymore and that's another way of doing it 
Um, but I don't particularly want to do that because I don't want to make this thing complicated. Um, so what I think I will do, I think I'll just draw a rectangle, um, a black rectangle, rectangle over the right side, which is where the variables get printed. So I'll just draw a black rectangle straight over it all, and then we'll reprint the new values. It's um, it's not amazing, but it's quick, simple, and easy. So I need to find on here uh, fill rectangle, uh, fill round rect. I'm not exactly sure what round rect is, but fill. Oh, there you go. Test fill rect. So if I just see what that is, let's uh, do control and F. Test fill rect. Here we go. So for whatever this is, well, whatever. Um, I'm just going to copy this. Now, uh, loop. So we want to. Right, what do we want to do exactly? Well, before we refresh any values, we want to write over the old value. So I'll just paste this in here. Right. We should be able to actually use the colours black and white uh, just written in. I hope so, anyway. So, what do we want to do here? Let's delete this. And delete that. I don't know if we're going to need this display. Just Control T, Control S. Um, now, where do we want it to start and end? Um, right. I uh, right. I tell you what. Let's just set all of this to zero for the time being. Just reset it all. Okay. Color percent two. I'm not sure what that is at the minute. I have a gut feeling that that will be black. Okay. I'm actually going to change this to white just for a minute, and the parameters here are. X, Y, width, and height. So this is going to be 64, uh, 0, uh, 64, and 32, I would imagine. So let's upload that and we'll see. So what I hope to achieve is that the right side of the screen will uh, have a big white block over it. And uh, let's go over to the camera and just make sure that that's what's happening. And you can see there that that is what's happening. So we've got the voltage, amperage, time, and average amps. And what we're doing every time uh, this gets refreshed, we are actually blocking over the whole lot with a big rectangle. So what we need to do now is change the colour of the rectangle to black, and um, then we should be good to go. So we'll change that to black. And what it means now is that um, the text of the values which is printed to the screen gets written over big by a big black rectangle every second and that's good that's just what we want so now um, I think we can get rid of this one we don't need it anymore and um, let's carry on with the sketch so here where we print these values um, we actually need to uh, print them to screen so let's have a quick look here. We've got these um, these values here, so we'll need to probably copy this. And let's paste it down here. So do we need this set text color white? Yes, we do, because um, it's previously black, or we could do it black and then set it back white, but whatever, we'll do it this way. So now, um, voltage. So we need the value for voltage here. So where's voltage? Battery voltage, there it is. String battery voltage. So battery voltage needs to go in there. The current amperage um, needs to go here. We'll copy that. Current amperage goes there. Then time. Ah, right, we don't actually have one for time at the minute. I'll have to come back to that. And average amps, we don't have that at the minute either. But there is something we need to do here. We need to move 
all these values over to the right. So if we change that to 64, well, in fact, maybe we should go a bit more. Let's say 60, 68, just to be sure. So we change that to 68 across all of these, and we should get them uh, running in sort of like a tabular format. Um, so yeah, that should be good. So next we need to get um, a timer. We need to get a timer working. So we need a new variable over here. So we need um, unsigned long. And this can be called, um, I don't know, what should we call it? Um, current, well, it's not really time, but that'll do. We'll call it time, but it's not really time. Um, so, we've got that. Now, loop. So, every loop, we need to say, um, set the current time to whatever the current time is. So, current time equals millis. That's the current amount of milliseconds since the Arduino started. Now, it's not perfect at the moment because, I mean, we're going through it step by step, but you'll see that it'll work sufficiently for the time being. So, over here, time is going to be, you could just say millis, but let's do it this way current time. Now I'm not exactly sure if that's going to work so I'm just going to put string around it. It may not need it but there we go. So we also need to do um, this divided by 1000 because we only want to know how many seconds. Again this may not work fully but we'll see. Now average amps, uh, let's go back to that one in a minute. I'll try uploading this and we'll just see where we stand so far. And there you go. So that seems about right. 3.42, uh, 1.3 amps, time in seconds. So, so far so good. Let's carry on with the rest of the code.